Hello fellow computer enthusiasts, my name is Christian, hope you're doing well today. Welcome to the first episode of my game programming series called From Scratch to Steam, where I would like to show you how to develop a video game from the first idea up to the point when we upload the final release to the Steam store. At first it may sound nearly impossible to develop a video game as a one-man show, but according to my experience this huge undertaking can be done if we follow these simple rules. And we will borrow the first rule from John Romero's 2016 GDC Europe talk. So let's dive into it. First, no prototypes, just make the game. Polish as you go, don't depend on polishing happening later. Always maintain shippable source code. Second, have realistic expectations. Focus on the most important gameplay elements first. Third, now your skills and limitations. If you're a developer like me, focus on programming and game design. Don't waste your time on the various aspects of game development that you are not good at. It's okay to buy a game asset if you can't create it by yourself. The output is what matters. Fourth, visual progress in every iteration. I have a full-time job, my wife and a son, as well as friends and hobbies, so I have to make every minute count that I can afford to spend on a video game. After each coding session, there must be something that makes visual progress and that I can be proud of. Fifth, do not fall in love with technology or algorithms. Perfection is not our goal. You want to finish a game. Keep your code as simple as possible and if it works, great. Continue with the next feature. Don't waste your time refactoring. I mean, of course you are going to write better code in future, because you will become smarter, but that will be the code for another game. With these simple rules in mind, let's talk about the game itself and how to start. So in general, it helps to differentiate between the three major phases of game development process. I used to call the first phase the exploration or concept phase of a game. That's where you find and or refine your game idea, from something that is in your head to some sort of a visual and in best case testable prototype. During the exploration phase, it is important to define the core gameplay mechanics and fiddle around with your main idea to see what works great from a player's perspective and what can be ignored in the final game. It is also the phase where you come up with a clear vision of the visual aspects of your new game. We could do that by creating a mood board with screenshots and videos from other games, comics, videos, movies that inspired us to make the game. But we can also search through the Unity Asset Store to find inspiration as well as a solid asset base in case we can't create them by our own. After all that, when we have a clear direction, we need to cut everything that is not really needed to make our game a great game to play. That's important because in the end, only a finished game is a masterpiece that we can upload to the store. To sum it all up, the exploration phase helps us to visualize every aspect of our new game and matches dreams with reality so that we come up with realistic expectations of something we can really do alone start to finish. The second phase is the most critical phase of a game development process and I used to call it the long journey or the development phase. That's where we have to build the game and stick to the original plan which is from my experience always a critical success factor as well as the hardest thing to do, to be honest. Because over the course of the time we will develop new ideas and might fall in love with certain aspects of our game that we haven't discovered yet. And don't get me wrong, I don't say that you are not allowed to improve the game while you are in the development phase. But keep in mind that every new feature will introduce more complexity in the code and in the end it takes more time to finish the game. And your only goal must be to finish a game, not the most perfect one with every single feature you love. Stick to the important gameplay mechanics that you evolved during the exploration phase and try to finish them before introducing new ideas. Otherwise there is a huge risk of never finishing the game and therefore never uploading something to the store. When the game is finished, you have at least 80% of the work necessary to release a game done. That's when you enter the third phase of the game development process, 
which I call the polishing phase. In best case, most of your game is already playtested by others because you have already invited them during phase 2 to provide feedback. Otherwise, you should invite your peers now and rework certain aspects of your game according to their feedback. That's where you fix most of the bugs before release as well as playtesting everything as much as possible to see whether it already makes fun or if you need to further improve before you upload your masterpiece to the stores. It is also the phase where you create the Steam store page and marketing material if you haven't done that already. Before we start the game development process, let's have a short look on the different game genres and try to classify which kind of skills are needed in order to finish a game in a certain category. Because not every kind of game might be suited to be created by just one developer or when talking about this video series to be created by myself. For example, I am not a musician, so it might be not the best idea to try to create a game like Guitar Heroes or other rhythm-based games while not having any clue about music and sounds and especially not how to create them. In order to figure out which genre or kind of game I can consider within this series of creating a game start to finish, I will give my humble opinions about the most known game genres and try to some sort of weight the amount of skill that is needed in a certain area to create a great game in this specific genre. At first, we will have a look on the game engine that are typically used within a specific genre. The amount of skills you need to write gameplay mechanics in code or maybe in a visual script language. The amount of graphical assets needed for a game both in 2D and 3D. The amount of animations that are needed to make a good looking game and if special things are needed like facial expressions or clothing. The amount of music and sound effects of course that is necessary to create a believable atmosphere in your game. The testability and balancing of our game especially if there is a way of doing it in an automated fashion which will save us time as well as content like stories, dialogues and non-generic elements you need to create by yourself. For example, it's very easy to program a rule-based game like Tetris and have players enjoy the game for hours without the need of creating huge amounts of assets. While in adventure games for example, like Monkey Island, where everything you can experience is in general handcrafted, you need to invest a lot of time to create every minute playtime by yourself for the players. But enough with the theory, here are the game genres and my honest self-assessment about my game development skills. The side-scrolling shooter. Some parallax scrolling backgrounds combined with some handmade, mostly procedural generated levels and I have a side-scrolling game that might be very fun to play. I think this kind of genre is, if we can find the right assets in the Unity Asset Store, a game that we can easily do as a one-man army. In my opinion, the major work is to design the bullets and to write a believable and fun procedural level generator that creates a game that is easy to learn but hard to master. As well as designing bosses and enemies that are challenging and in some sort predictable so that a player can get better over time. Music and sound is important to those games, but I think that everything you will find in an asset store will do the job. In my opinion, side-scrolling shooters get a rating of 4.5 out of 5, where 5 is very possible as a single developer, while 1 means nah, in general it's nearly impossible to do it alone, or at least it's impossible for me. Don't forget, it all depends on your specific skill set and the overall rating is based on mine, so it will be different in your honest self-assessment. Top-down shooters. Most of the side-scrolling shooter factors are also valid for the top-down shooters, with some minor additions like walls and doors and so on, if you think about a walking character like a robot instead of a classic aircraft. AI might also be something that is more critical than a side-scrolling shooter, especially if there is no auto-scrolling and enemies do not disappear when they leave the screen. So in my opinion, it might be a little bit more difficult to code a top-down shooter than a classical R-type like classic side-scrolling with auto-scroller. But on the other hand, 
I know that there are very easy to use and great value gameplay engines out there available at least for Unity 3D that makes creating a top-down shooter very doable for a one-man show. With this information in mind, I would rate the top-down shooter genre 4.5 out of 5 when it comes to the feasibility to create such a game by myself. Real-time strategy. Back in the days, RTS games like Warcraft and Starcraft were king, both in competitive multiplayer as well as big story-driven campaigns. We needed terrain, a bunch of units for at least two different factions as well as a very nice artificial intelligence that is capable of playing macro, meaning taking care of unit production and economics, as well as micromanaging units in combat situations. Maps can be procedural generated, but I would prefer handcrafted ones, at least in campaign, which would be very time consuming. We also have to connect certain maps via the campaign in some sort, where we have to tell a story in some form or another, which might be also very time consuming as well. Therefore, skirmish battles against the computer and multiplayer are the only options in my opinion, but to be honest, multiplayer is hard to work with as a single developer because testing is much more effort and even if you use a multiplayer framework of your game engine, it increases the complexity of the game very much. When you release a multiplayer game, there's also the risk that not enough players play your game and matchmaking will take forever for those players. So I think it is also harder to sell a multiplayer game on Steam, especially when you are an unknown developer like me without any community. So my rating for RTS games even if it depends on scenarios, I would only wait 2 out of 5, so I might not consider them in the upcoming video about the exploration phase. One of the favorite game genres of all time is the classic first-person shooter. Game like Doom, Halo and the Call of Duty series. Basically, we need a floor, some walls or terrain, simple mechanic to move a character paired with a lot of guns and enemies and we are good to go to have hours of fun. It might be as simple as it sounds and many engines come with great first person shooter support like the Unreal Engine which has first person in its DNA. We are also not limited to classical shooter setups where the protagonist must be a soldier like Singy. I can also imagine a first person fantasy shooter where you play a wizard and you have to kill a lot of enemies with spells like Frost, Fire and Arcan. After creating a basic shooter scaffold with a first person player controller, some basic enemies and a world to play in, we can add new features in an iterative approach up to a point where we think it's fun and finished enough to sell it. So I would rate the feasibility of creating a shooter that is fun to play 4 out of 5 for me as a solo developer. Power defense games are awesome and also very doable as a solo developer. In general, we need a few units that are able to walk and some towers and a little bit of gameplay mechanic to make that specific genre work. We can create a tower defense game in 2D as well as 3D and we have to come up with a good balancing mechanism that makes the game easy to learn but hard to master. From my experience and with all the assets that are available for sound, music, shaders and animation and also 3D and 2D models, we can easily create a tower defense game that is fun to play and where we don't have to create every asset by hand. I am very confident to finish a tower defense game, so I would give it a rating 5 out of 5 from my perspective and my skill set as a solo developer. To be totally honest, I fall in love I guess it was in the 2000 or 2005, something around that, with MOBA games. During the early days with Warcraft 3 and the mod defense of the engine or just Dota. We have come a long way since then with Wells Dota 2 and League of Legends and all the other awesome MOBA games out there. But for me, as a solo developer, I will keep them out of consideration because balancing is not easy in that genre and building a community that is big enough to make matchmaking fun is a full-time job by its own. So in my opinion, we should skip the MOBA games for today and I will rate it a solid one out of five. One of the most versatile genres are the role-playing games, starting with the classical Dungeons and Dragons inspired ones like Baldur's Gate. Looking to the Eastern JRPGs like Nino Kuni and the outstanding tactical ones like the Disgaea series and the legendary Final Fantasy Tactics. But we don't have to go that big. 
In general, we need a setting or at least a meaningful story. We have to implement a combat system that is fun for the player, as well as some sort of a world map to evolve through the story. I think most of the graphical assets and sound can be found in the asset store and everything that's gameplay mechanic can easily be built by just one developer in an iterative approach, one feature after another. With a solid object oriented programming style, we will reach a point where we have a finished RPG that we can sell. So I would rate the doability of an RPG genre in general 4 out of 5 because there is much to code, which is my main profession, and everything else can be acquired from asset stores, which is great for me as a developer. While preparing the script for this video and doing all the research, I first thought that I have to skip that category, because I am not a player of games like FIFA or Madden. But then I realized that many games like Super Mario Kart and Super Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games are also sport games and I really enjoy playing these with my friends and family. Depending on your setup, it can be a little bit tricky to find suitable assets within a store if you can create them by yourself. I'm not sure, but I have the feeling that it's easier to go with a classical fantasy or sci-fi setting when you need to rely on external asset stores. This category of games is something that I haven't developed before, so it's also hard to judge how complicated the game the mechanic needs to be in order to make a game work and feel good. The most crucial factor might be writing and believable AI. That is a fair challenge for a new player and that can scale with the players getting better over time. With my skill set and the limited knowledge that I have today about this specific genre, I would rate the feasibility of doing a game in a sports genre maybe a 2 out of 5. Puzzle games are awesome and fun, especially as they are easy to learn but very difficult to master. So we need to keep this in mind when designing the game and make sure that the core loop is engaging and simple but challenging so that the player enjoys our game. The gameplay mechanics are easy to implement and the testability and balancing should be possible as a solo developer. All the graphical assets, sounds, music and shaders needed to be built to have a good looking puzzle game are as well very easy to build or we can just buy them from the stores. And I know that there are game engines and also templates for certain game engines out there to create a good looking puzzle game by your own and you don't have to write any line of code. Just try them out. I give it a rating 5 out of 5 because in my opinion a puzzle game is something that we can finish as a solo developer. Look behind you, a three headed monkey! If you are an old guy like me, you might remember the glowy days of point and click adventures from publishers like LucasArts. I have beautiful memories of games like Indiana Jones, the amazing Monkey Island series, Maniac Manson, Day of the Tentacle, as well as Sam and Max. To create such a glorious game, you need a lot of graphical assets, sounds and music, and in best case some voice actors to add speech in at least one language. So in my opinion, it's very fun to create an adventure game, but it's also a lot of linear effort, therefore I will give it a rating of 3 out of 5. Platformer games will make a good starting point for the first solo dev project. In my opinion every asset can be found or created and you can scale the project while you're going. Most engines offer great platformer support. Things like parallax swirling backgrounds, tile maps and sprites are already there. I think a crucial success factor might be the story or a unique gameplay element like time control or gravity in order to distinguish your game from all the other platformer games out there. For me the platformer genre is great even for me the platformer genre even in 2.5D or in the third dimension is a 5 out of 5 and it's very likely that a solo developer can finish a game of that kind. After having this deep dive into 14 game genres and analyzing nearly 100 games, I come to the conclusion that we will mostly consider tower defense, tactical RPGs and rook-likes as well as platformers and shooters in the upcoming video about our exploration phase for the a full game start to finish or start to steam store video series. Stay tuned and thanks for watching this episode of ILTP WC and don't forget to play with computers. 
because we love to play with computers since the day we were kids.